Hi, this is Chris with Stupid Raisins, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to back up Final Cut Pro projects. Now you might be thinking, this never happens to me. Losing files happens to other people, but you never know when things just Now I'm gonna share with you how to back up and restore your libraries in Final Cut Pro. And then we'll take a look at archiving your library when you're finished with the project. Let's go check that out. So we're in Final Cut Pro and what we're trying to do is back up our project. So the first thing we wanna consider is what are our options for our backup? Typically, you have your Macintosh hard drive. You can see mine right here off to the side. Uh, I am currently editing off of an SSD drive um, for all my project files right now, which is under this Raisins SSD. So you may only have the Macintosh hard drive. If that's the case, you just wanna choose that location for your backup. But if you do have an SSD, or like I'm gonna use right now, just as an example, we're gonna throw in another hard drive that's gonna load up right here. All right, it's popped in right there. So we're gonna dive into creating a new project. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new library. We're gonna to go to File, New, Library. We're gonna name this Raisin with a backup. We're gonna go ahead and save that to our SSD. So now that we have a new library, let's go ahead and click on it. So in the library sidebar, we're gonna select our library, come over here to the inspector window. So if you don't see it, you know, just click these sliders. Then we're gonna go to storage locations and click on modify settings. So this is where we can select where we want this, this to back up to. So as we go through this, you can see, okay, you can select the option for where you want your media to be stored. You can see where the motion content's gonna be restored, the cache, which is a lot of the render files, and then the backups. So what we wanna do is we wanna set up a backup on a separate drive from what we're editing on. So we're gonna go ahead and choose. We're looking for, yep, that external drive. Let's choose that. So now all of our backups are gonna get stored in that external hard drive. So now we have an existing library. If we wanted to change the backups for this one, again, we just select it, go over to modify settings, come down here to backups and choose our new one there as well. A lot of the same steps involved. All right, so let's say we need to restore a backup. So we can go here into file. We're gonna go to open library and then go down to the bottom where it says from backup. And then we've got some dates and times. So we could look back and say, oh, hey, back on November 11th, that Thursday in the afternoon, it did a backup. And you know what? During all this time is when I made changes that I'm no longer happy with and I wanna revert back. You could select this, we'll click on open, allow that to load. And it has now created a separate library that is basically, it's a copy of this, but it's a copy as of an earlier date. So if you're curious what this looks like in your folder, we'll bring this up right here for this uh, current library. So to make sense of these numbers here, you can just take a look and see that it's organized by date and time. So you've got 2021, 11, 11, and then 1638, which is like 438 in the afternoon, 438 PM. So it's, it's, it's that 24 hour clock versus the 12 hour clock. But that's how those are organized there. If you're looking to find where those libraries are at to either delete them or just have access to them. So there is another option that you may be looking to do. You may be looking to not just create a backup just while you're working, but maybe create a backup and be able to archive it for future use. So I'm gonna show you how you can archive your project. There's a few different things you can do depending on what you wanna have saved for the future. So you can just simply take the final file and just take that, store it on a hard drive somewhere. Now I want you to know that we got your back. We share new videos like this all the time to help with your Final Cut Pro projects. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you can get notified when we release our next video. The other alternative is you can take an entire library and put all of the contents into that one library and take that whole thing, move it on that external hard drive and keep that all together. So we'll select the library, then go over to the inspector and in, in looking at the modify settings, what we wanna do is set everything to be stored in library. Okay. And now this is asking if we wanna include the render files. I feel like the render files, once you've created your project, you don't wanna keep those any longer. So we're gonna say don't include. So we actually have the option here where we can go ahead and click on consolidate. 
And what that's going to do is going to take everything, all the external media that we choose, and it's going to move it into that library. This library is going to become massive. So just keep that in mind uh, because everything's going to get, end up copied into it. So we want it to be in the library. We can choose to have original media. Highly recommend that. That means the source clips are, you know, with your library. Uh, then we're going to uncheck optimized media and proxy media. Optimized media basically takes your, your original media, turns it into the best media for editing. Proxy media helps if your hardware just isn't keeping up with your edits, especially if you have old hardware working with like 4K footage. You'll want to select proxy media because that 4K footage will get dropped to a lower resolution during edit. And then when it exports, it'll export at that higher resolution. So for the sake of archiving, we're not going to want optimized or proxy media in this library. It's just going to take up a lot of room. So we're going to uncheck these because these can always be created again in the future from the original media. So we'll say OK to this. Original media does not exist for some clips. This is just because this, this project has been changed so much that uh, some clips just are not there anymore. In the future, you can always use those placeholder spots to bring in a new clip. All right, and what you'll see at the top is the media management in the background tasks will begin to do its work. Most likely it's gonna be some slow work. So you wanna let this thing load, it's gonna take some time. So one more thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to look at some of these projects, like I've got this one loaded here. You're gonna to wanna to click up here and go to File, Delete Generated Project Files. And what this is gonna do is it's going to delete the render files, optimized, and proxy media files for you. That way this library is gonna be a lot smaller easier to maintain and move around. So we'll press OK to that. You'll see some of the render dots will start appearing here. You've got that progress bar. So before those start going crazy and adding more files to your computer, you're going to want to click here and close that project. Then from there, you're going to want to grab your library, drag it over to your external drive where you want to archive everything at. So it's gonna take that, it's time to copy that large file. And once that's done, you've now archived your entire library. All right, I'm gonna rename this Raisin Archive. Let's say the Stupid Raisins One project is our final project and all that we wanna save is everything involved with this. So what we're gonna do is select this project, go up to File, Copy Project to Library. And we're gonna select Raisin Archive. And now we have a lot of options to, to run here. So copy the project to the library. So you may just be wanting to move things to a different library and just copy this over. Um, in that case, you may want to keep the um, media in its external location and all that. But what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to take the original media, everything that's been put into this library, as well as any media stored in external locations. That way it's all going to pull into the library. So for the purpose of archiving, we want that all to be in one spot. Let's go to modify our settings here. Make sure that we're saying, okay, we want our media in library. We want the motion content in library, the cache in library, and the backups are fine where they're at. And then we will press OK. And final cut is going through the process of media management. So it's copying that project from this original library into this new library and you can see it's appeared here. So now we brought all the media, all the, all the files regarding this finalized project and we've put it into the Raisin Archive library and now we can take that library, that, that purple file with the stars, we can take that and move it to different external locations. So we've taken a look at how to back up your library and the best locations to do that. We also looked at making that file size more manageable. That way we're not storing things that we don't need. And with that, we've reached the end. Thanks for tagging along. Ah, peace of mind. Now that you've learned how to back up your projects in Final Cut Pro, I've made another video about how to clone yourself in Final Cut Pro. Click here to check it out.